Harsh Vikramaditya Motwani, the director of Uran and Lutera, told right. me he hasn't met another 25 year old with, with as much clarity as you. He said, you were quite sure, you were quite clear that you wanted your first film to be directed by Rakesh Mehra and your second film by Vikram and you went out and made sure that that happened. First of all, it's very rare for me to hear any praise from Vikram Ditya Motwane. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I've shot with him for about 30 days mm. because he's just... He'll never tell you to your face. Right. He'll tell other people if he's fond of you. And I, my relationship with Vikram started after I saw Udan as a 17 or an 18 year old. And I was getting late for a flight to Singapore and I just couldn't stop talking about the film. He told me the story. And then uh, our relationship kind of started from there. Also, it's not true. I wanted, I want, I was almost doing Bhavesh Joshi back then. Mm. But uh, he rightly so felt I was too young for the part. Uh, then it kind of went into some other uh, actors' uh, hands, and then I, I Mirzia happened, you know. Mm. So yeah. Was it just inevitable that you were going to be an actor? You know, I actually. Uh, uh, went through a phase of wanting to be a writer-director. Mm. I went to uh, Southern California Chapman University. I studied writing for four years. Mm. Within the, pr the program, I did a year of acting. And then somewhere as uh, in that life as a college kid, I realized that maybe, uh, you know, I'm meant to be an actor. Uh, and then let's see what happens after that, you know. Was there a film that changed your life? Uh, in terms of watching? Like... Uh, I think Badlands for me, mm. Terence Malick's Badlands. Uh, it's not a film that I saw very early on. Uh, it's a film that I saw actually recently. It's a film I saw after Tree of Life, but uh, it's a film that changed my life because I realized how many generations of filmmakers have been inspired by Badlands. Sure. So my watching Tree of Life led me to Badlands, which led, led me to Edge of Heaven, which, mm. which led me to New World. and. And now Terence Malik is, is my favorite filmmaker, you know, so... What's a kid who loves Terence Malik do, <laughs> doing in the Hindi film industry? Yeah, that's, that's, you know, I mean, I think uh, the kinds of films that I'm doing uh, are films I'd also like to watch, mm. you know. I think uh, Mirzia is a film I'd love to watch. Uh, Bhavesh Joshi is a film I'd love to watch. Uh, and whatever I, I take up after that, you know. So I think there is now uh, a lot of films that I, I kind of gravitate towards that, mm. are being, that are being made locally, you know, and... Um, the whole idea is to kind of tell Indian stories to Indian people, but in a new way. Yeah. You know, You know, I could ask you how your father, Anil Kapoor, has influenced your choices, but I want to talk about how you've influenced his choices. Right. He's told me that um, it was you who drove him, pushed him to take on Slumdog Millionaire. Right. And then Zoya Akhtar's film, Dil yeah. Ne Do, you said, don't let go of this. That's right. And both films, he wasn't entirely sure whether uh, he wanted to do them. And, and, and they really have been, in a sense, turning Game points changers. for him, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. You know, uh, I, I think Slumdog especially, mm. uh, because there was no reference point for him. You know, I'm a guy that's grown up watching Trainspotting but in the beach. But how old were you then? I was, when I read the script of Slumdog, I was 16. Mm. Uh, old enough to understand script uh, because I'd been watching films from all over the world at such a young age because it went from the Laserdisc collection before which was the VHS collection to right. the, the DVD collection to my Blu-ray collection and uh, that's all I did, you know. So uh, I'd seen uh, train spotting, I had a poster of it on my door. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd seen The Beach, I'd seen Shallow, uh, okay. Shallow Grave and uh, you know, so I'd seen, I was familiar with Boyle's films and the, the, the script of Slumdog itself is a page turner. Sure. Because of the way the, the Q&A is, it it's goes back right. and it goes forth, it goes back. And I was like riveted. Right. And I told him one morning that you have to do this film. And uh, then he kind of realized, he went, he met Danny Boyle who was staying at the Marriott. Mm. And uh, uh, he's like, I only have 10 days of work. So I'm like, uh, that's great, you know, you, but you got to do it. You're the main antagonist of the film. And, and then it happened. I think with Dil Dhadakne, though, obviously, Zoya is so amazing. Yeah. And uh, the mainstream uh, Hindi audience is familiar with her work, mm. like Luck by Chance and Zindagi and stuff. So I think his reservations were kind of playing an older character that's right. and stuff like that. So I just kind of convinced him to kind of take it up, you know. Um, What's it like going up under the same roof with three actors in the same house. I mean, is that is that hard? Do all conversations just revolve around films as a result? You know, I would. I don't want to be one of those people that comes on a show and lies and says no. <laughs> because the answer is yes. What do I do, you know? What do we all do? We can't because, I mean, uh, there are so many films coming out of this house on a yearly basis. Yeah. Uh, and now with the phase that we're in, they're all very, like, creative films, mm. you know? Uh, so we do talk about films a lot, you know, so... 
you've said that it's not the Anis Bazmi kind of movies that your dad made that are the ones that yeah. you're a fan of, but it's the it's the other kind. I, I get into a lot of trouble for these comments, uh, but I don't mean them in a in a in a bad way. Yeah. It's just that there are there are certain people they like certain films, mm. and you don't necessarily are over the moon when you watch certain films. Mm. So for me, if if see, I grew up in the '90s, so I actually reflected on a lot of my dad's work uh, after I had grown up. Right. So, for example, I saw Parinda as a 16, 17-year-old on DVD, mm. and I was like, "Whoa!" I didn't know that that film was out there, man. Right. You know, and made uh, in the '80s. Yeah. Made in the '80s, and I was like, "That is a masterpiece." Mm. You know. Uh, so, but again, talking about Parinda, I think it's one of the best Anil Kapoor films, but mm. not one of the best Anil Kapoor performances. Okay. I, I think there are there are many better. Sure. But as a film, so I think even with with his old films, I gravitate more towards Parinda, mm. uh, Virasat, Nayak, and Pukar. Sure. That phase that he went through in the late '90s, early 2000s, mm. uh, and then the Vosa Din and the Lamhes and, and and those kind of films, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, but he's. Do you just do you just blank out the whole David Dhawan phase? <laughs> and I know yeah. that you're friends with Varun. Varun, I just got off the phone with him. We we spoke to him right before this, but uh, no, actually, my my memory is see David. Uh, uncle Rohit and Varun are family, mm. and Varun and I are very close. Mm. Uh, and so are Rohit and I. And the the memories that I have of the David Dhawan films are the outdoors, the ah. Divana Mastana outdoors, you know, sunshine and outdoor locations, and Varun and I fooling around. But I don't really have creative. Um, like I, I remember having a good time in my summer holidays. You mm. know, I don't remember being on set so much. But sure. uh, that was a huge part of uh, my 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 dad did kind of all kinds of films. You know, mm. so. You know, for a while now, Harsh, we've been talking about how Hindi cinema is going through this really golden phase, if you right. like. I mean, we're making movies, like you said, like we want, like the ones we want to watch, yeah. uh, films that a younger generation can relate to because the characters speak like them and look like them. Um, there's also, unfortunately, a another side to it. Films aren't making a lot of money these days. Right, we're we're yeah. hearing about studios, sh you know, folding yeah. up. We're hearing about superstars still being paid way too much. Movies yeah. costing too much to make. What's it like being a young actress stepping into the industry uh, in this state of flux where, you know, really I'm reminded of what William Goldman said in Hollywood at the time, you know, no one knows anything in the film business. Yeah. There's no such thing as a sure thing anymore. Yeah, well, actually it's such an interesting question because we're going through a very interesting phase. I mean, I remember a, a couple of years ago, there was that year where Ye Jawani released, Chennai Express release. There were like some 8-10 blockbusters and That's right. people, everybody was getting ridiculous fees and right. alternative films were getting green-lighted and come to now, where there is this belief that off films work, mm. Utta Punjab, Neerja Kapoor and Sons, Ki and Ka, mm. but uh, we are not great right now. Yeah. You know, so I don't. What a bad year! What a bad year! You know, what a bad. It's scary. You mm. know, I'm just thankful that uh, two or three of my films have got financing. Right. Uh, you know, and I'm I'm so fortunate and blessed. You know. Uh, and that completely has to do with the directors that are helming these films, mm. you know, because they have their own brand. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I'm just I'm just blessed that by the time I'm uh, a year older, I would have had two or three releases, you know. Sure. So I'm just like, just kind of take things as they come. Let Mirzia release. Let finish Bhavesh. Mm. And um, you know how it is. Two, three films do well, and the whole thing kind of turns around. True. But there are some things that need to be addressed. I think the whole GST thing is happening next yeah. year. Maybe that will help us. Mm. Maybe maybe ticket prices. I don't know. Well, I don't know what the answer is. But Correct. I'm sure we're doing. There's something is not right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So so. What was the experience of making Mirza? What was your oh. um, you know what was the first day on set like? Uh, you know, everyone knows Anil Kapoor's son is going to be an actor. Right. What was it like when he finally went on set? First of all, the 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 Mirzia process to get ready for that film, we prep for eighteen months. Right, you took horse riding lessons, archery. Yeah, so I uh, went to Delhi for six months to learn the basics of riding. I'd never been on a horse. The whole hin film hinges on my ability as a rider. Came back a month in Mahalakshmi, eight months at this point, and I think I'm like the bee's knees. Right. And Mehra comes or to Mahalakshmi, and he's like, you're not even twenty percent <laughs> of where I need you to be in typical Mehra fashion. So I'm like, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Right. So they found this uh, trainer in Seattle called Katie who's uh, got a uh, horse, uh, like a ranch where she has 15 horses and mm. stuff. And I went and lived with her for six weeks. I lived the stable boy's life, waking up in the morning, mm. cleaning after the horses, putting the saddles on, training with her, going riding in the wilderness. Uh, I'd been doing archery simultaneously. Uh, when I went there, I combined the two for the first time. Uh -huh. So riding and shooting and... This this took about a year. Then I came back. We started with the polo sequence. So I went to Mahalakshmi again to do the whole polo thing. Mm. And uh, this went in conjunction with look tests, acting teachers from abroad, Mehra himself. 
it was a film in itself mm -hmm. honestly 18 months with mera and then once we went on set i was so ready because i'd been wanting this for so long mm -hmm. thinking about how this film is going to be that uh, you know it was great the first day on set was a polo sequence so i was galloping at a million miles per hour and hitting a ball and saimi was sitting and drinking wine and like looking at me sure and clapping yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know so uh, it was fun it was fun never think of adil and mirza in uh, simultaneously mm. adil doesn't know mirza exists mirza doesn't know adil exists there is no connection between the two right so we prepped for adil and mirza simultaneously then it shifted focus to adil because we shot that so we shot adil from november to march we broke from march to july and prepped for mirza we had different costume designers and different makeup designers for the world of mirza saiba right. because he wanted no correlation and mm. no similar thought processes and we went and shot a 20 day film in ladakh you know uh, and we shot a 70 day film in rajasthan and then the editor kind of blended them together in a in a beautiful way you know right. so two films you know you started the second film with vikram yeah. um, bhavesh joshi before naturally mirza saiba yeah. did that put a lot of pressure on you on vikram um it's an expensive film it's a film he tried to get made yeah. uh, twice over and here's he's making it with a newcomer sizable we, budget we crack a lot of jokes on set I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, you don't know no, it's uh, it's uh, it was it's bhavesh joshi for me was first of all i was lived in mirzia for so long mm. uh, i finished shooting mirzia september last year i took some time off vikram started rewriting the script i got an english draft in april that was amazing and then anurag was promoting raman raghav because it released in june that's right and he was at can in may mm -hmm. so he only had time to do the hindi dialogue draft uh, and it was ready by july so july 1st i get it in my hand july 14th is the shoot i look at madhu and vikram i said are you guys crazy yeah. <laughs> you know two weeks prep two weeks i had a year and a half this that you know so i was like uh, you know give me a month you know mm -hmm. so they were kind enough to give me till the 1st of august uh after which we took some pretty drastic steps which included workshops from 9 am to 6 pm mm. and uh you moved into a flat i moved into a flat with a buddy that's playing my roommate in the film and we lived together for a month it's very different when you you wake up in your bungalow you go to workshops and you come back mm. it's very different when you wake up in shastri nagar in a airbnb with your buddy and you guys have the same meals you go to workshops you go out you go out in andheri for a drink they might might sound silly right. but when you're actually there and doing it you've developed that physical fondness for each other you know the inside jokes which was very important you know so i had the luxury to kind of do that and then uh, i want to tell know. you what i want to interrupt you and tell you what rishi kapoor told me you know recently he said um you know ranbir was preparing to i think it was rockstar he was right. preparing to play rockstar in in tazali's film and he began to take lessons he began to take uh, guitar lessons and rishi kapoor told him you don't need to do that you just need to act you don't right, have to right. learn uh, right. you don't have to learn how to play the guitar i mean you know does your dad your dad comes from that generation in um does he advise you on these things does he let you pick your uh, journey or i i think my dad is very different in the sense that he he realizes my personality and the kind of filmmakers that i'm working with and he 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 knows what they need in order to make the films that they, the way that they want mm. like with mirzia it's 95% me 5% stunt double you know the action sequences and the emotion of also shooting an arrow on a horse not necessarily just doing the action right the confidence and flair because if you read the folklore mirza was one of the greatest archers ever mm. which is where sahiba's fear comes from so it's it's the physical prep is rooted in the emotional core of the story it's impossible to make the film otherwise sure. okay with bhavesh joshi it's just performance mm. uh there is a lot of action in the second half that i will be preparing for obviously i'm not going to be phenomenal at it unless you give me 3 years which i don't have right but you make the most of your time you know and uh there are some films that need more time than others you know uh, and i i i believe i that's something i really believe in 
I'm that's just the person that I am. You know, I need that time. Um, you also, of course, famously assisted Anurag Kashyap on Bombay Velvet. What was that experience like, and how did that prepare you in a sense for, you know, for what this business holds? Um, this big, huge labor of love. You know, everyone invested in these massive sets, the kind of money that was poured into it, and then you saw it all really come down, crumbling yeah. down. Um, do these things make you cynical? Do you feel like they prepare you? I think. First of all, I aided on Bombay Velvet because I normally never listen to people. I I do what what comes to me naturally, but everybody said you should aid, you should be an AD. Mm. To honestly, for all the actors watching this, for me, from my perspective, I don't think you need to. I think you should do acting workshops. You should travel. You should watch films and work with directors that believe in you. If you get the chance, be lucky enough. Audition. You learn a lot. If you want to be a director, then it helps. You know. If you want to be a producer, work in production. As far as the Bombay Velvet thing goes, I was so happy Anurag was making that film mm -hmm. because let's take a moment to realize he is the man that wrote Satya. He made Black Friday. He made Gulal. He made Devdi. He made Gangs of Wasipur one and two. People don't make those kinds of films after going through a lifetime. So mm. it's very unfair for us to kind of sit here and say, you know, Velvet went down. I mean, it did. It did, and it could have been a better film. But mm. it was about time he deserved that opportunity mm. of making a bigger film. You know, how many times is he going to go and and make an indie? Right. You know, um, I think. For me, if you ask me, I was a very small piece of the puzzle. Sure. I was just an intern, uh, you know, like the the lowest on set. But mm. I feel Bombay Velvet has so much incredible material from Mumbai Fables, from Anurag's and Vasan's stories, from the research that they had done. It would have been great as a mini series, a eight part mini series, a two part, a three part film. I think trying to condense it hurt the film, and. Um, Look, every film is not going to do well. Yeah, you know there are a lot of mainstream films also that went down. You mm -hmm. know, so it's 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 unfair. I'm I'm dying to see Anurag make a big film because he's a great director. You know, so how do you look at Sonam's career and what you know and and, and the leaps she's made? I mean, she had uh, Nirja this year, and this she year. really seems to have come into her own. Also, it's been a little unfair with her, hasn't it? I mean, it, you you feel like she gets a lot of flack for being fashionable. Yeah, you know. Um, Also, the thing with Sonam is, I think any other actress, if you did Nirja that year, then there could potentially be no negativity about right. you. But it finds her. She's not doing anything. She's just sitting at home. She's having a good time. She's relaxing, enjoying her life. But why do you have to? She's just done Nirja. Right. Before which she did Ranjana. Before which she did Bhag Milka. Before which she did Kup Sukhra. I mean, True. what do you want her to do? <laughs> you know. And I, it's really the standout performance of the year. Mm. I think uh, there are some other great performances, but I think to hold. Uh, a uh, two hour film in uh, a airplane uh, to make you cry constantly to make you laugh the stand out scenes you know the 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 piece of paper that she reads from her boyfriend the the song that she sings yeah. to the girl it's a stand out performance you know and um, i i the negativity does follow i don't know why and um, yeah she is very fashionable you know she's great she's incredible and uh, she's fought very hard from the early days right. when savari and delhi six went down mm -hmm. to be where she is and it takes somebody of great character to do that you know are you able to be objective about your sister your father your own performances or are you too close to these things are you able to kind of you know see the the person and i mean it's just too close you know i actually like to believe that i am pretty objective uh, i i criticize them when i feel that they could have done something better uh, and i i think i am objective about myself i know when i've done something uh, we're talking about and i know when i failed you know and i know when i'm bad mm. and i know when i'm really bad you know but uh, i think it's important to know those things you know early on especially so you know yeah where what is the direction you'd like to take your career and i know you've said repeatedly that you're not interested in the commercial movies but is that easier said than done you know i i think um, today we're sitting here maybe mirza turns out to be a commercial film maybe it doesn't right. we don't know it's very arrogant to assume what the audience thinks is commercial or not mm. if you told me nirja is going to do close to 80 crore net all india i would never believed you mm. same about kapoor and sons mm. same about urta but here we are talking about it so you never know and uh, your path cannot be a reflection of somebody else's it has to be your own so uh, so yeah i want to do films that i believe in and i you know a lot of actors say it's the script it's the script is a script would you do an amazing script if you didn't believe in the director it's a direct, it's direct, it's a director's medium right. you know it's 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 not theater mm. so i think even if like if we going back we started about terence malick terence malick writes 10 page long scripts and he makes amazing feature film <laughs> he gave me 10 pages i'd i'd leave everything and fly to los angeles you know so it's uh, when you read mirza 
by Gulzar. It's, you know how Mehra is going to interpret it. Mm. When you read Bhavesh Joshi, it's a reflection of Vikramaditya Motwani as a person. It's what he believes in, so you know how he's going to tell it. Right. You know, and uh, it's rare for directors to write their own stories. A lot of the times, they have other writers, yeah. they, they, they take scripts and then they execute, you mm. know. These films are so personal to these people. Uh, and to be at the forefront of that vision is, is amazing, you know. So, uh, I want to work with great directors, you know. So, all the best. Here's to a big, bright future. Thank you very Looking much. Looking forward to lots more, Harsh. Thanks. Thank you.